And so I get asked a lot at this point why anybody would need a tire pressure monitoring system. Like, doesn't somebody just walk up to the tire, push a gauge? Like, somebody does that already. Why do you need a, it all the time? So, oh, graduation. I forgot that one. <laughs> So I have some pictures um, about why you need a tire pressure monitoring system. Um, number one was obviously the tire shortage. Uh, Goodyear knew this tire shortage was coming and was trying to plan for it. And they also knew that uh, the number one reason for a tire failure was underinflation. And so if they could get those underinflations, even though the people were checking that tire regularly, they were still underinflated. Eight, they, they found that 80% of tire failures across the industry was due to underinflation. So they believe that underinflation was the number one culprit and there was a rising cost of tires and a shortage of tires. Actually some units, some um, equipment was shipped without rubber just because of the fact you could not find tires. Um, and we also all remember the Firestone incident with the explorers. As you can see in the bottom corner, that's an explorer when they would explode and flip the cars and, and cause huge damage. And mostly due to improper inflation as well as a manufacturing defect. So as I was developing, we uh, found we didn't need to reinvent the wheel in this case. Um, sometimes you find, you know, somebody's already done something why reinvent what they already did? I found, uh, researched all the different possibilities out there, and we actually signed a deal with Advantage Pressure Pro in the States. Uh, Advantage Pressure Pro had developed a product for the RV market, and uh, their product worked great for that, and they were marketing towards that alone, and they had never even thought of any other market outside of that. So we brought them a new market, and signed a deal with them to do development with their already existing technology to bring it up to par to last in the mining department, in the mining industry as well as the trucking industry. The picture up there is my very first prototype. This is the second prototype. And uh, it was all hand wired by me, but uh, it was built uh, back in the fall of 2005 is when we signed that deal. Um, in the winter, winter of that year, uh, we approached JS Redpath out of North Bay and uh, we signed our first deal. This is us, the first check. And our first company, uh, first mine we installed was uh, the Moncom mine in Timmins, Ontario. Uh, we flew up there to install. That's the system in my hands that we were installing there. And um, I had my first encounter with a mining road. <laughs> you got to remember, I went from a uh, university student to, or from a blue collar worker to a university student to a banker to now standing at the edge of a mining road and they hand me a walkie talkie. And so I get back into the Jeep that they I'd rented for the week and uh, started driving down the mining road and I found out quickly why you need the walkie talkie. The mining road is one lane. Cars are going up, cars are coming down, trucks are coming down, fully loaded. Two trailers full of rock coming down, and there's hairpin turns going like this up the mountain to the top of the mine. So you need the walkie-talkie to let people know where you are down the mile. So there's mile markers so you can let people know where you are and how far you're out from them, and you can kind of listen for the trucks as they're coming down. When I got to the mine, I installed uh, my first unit into uh, uh, a scoop tram such as this. Um, as I installed it, uh, the Moncow mine actually is uh, above ground for the trucks and they drive down the shaft. So th rather than going down an elevator or some other mines, they actually drive down the shaft. And uh, so this truck will normally be at surface and will dump at surface, but will drive down to pick up more uh, materials and dump it into a dump truck. Uh, so I installed the units, we got it all tested, ready to go, and I took my first ride down. Um, it's about 25 sitting in the rumble seat, which is kind of like a, a little truck. 
seat, like a little extended cab pickup truck, um, sitting on the back of that with a 20-year-old driver who, way up there in the middle of nowhere, he is quite a cowboy. And uh, as we were driving down at uh, full speed, he decides to show me how he can make it go faster by forcing the truck into fourth gear and getting it to roll on its own momentum down this steep, steep hill where we have literally inches on the sides of the mirrors to fit into this cavern. Needless to say, I'm pretty scared in the back of that. Um, <laughs> then as we're driving down at this, we're going about 26 miles an hour is the maximum speed for that truck to go down this hill. And uh, he lets me know that he was the guy everybody was talking about back at surface that had flipped two trucks the week before. <laughs> That was quite a first mine experience. <laughs> that first prototype was um, not the most intuitive. Uh, one mistake we had made was not realizing who would be using this. Uh, I had worked from a computer science background. Uh, the engineers I worked with in the United States were all true engineers. We were all geeks. And we had developed this to work for us worked great, we thought it was beautiful. But when we put it in the hands of your Joe Blow operator, it was difficult, it was cumbersome, it failed. Um, we went back to the drawing board and redesigned it. And that's why you see this second prototype looks much different than the first. From there, we moved into uh, some other mines, uh, Valley Inco. Uh, Valley Inco is, is a very deep mine, it's very hot very dirty, you come out black. Um, you can see different pictures of me at, at different places and, and besides some different sized tires. Um, and we also tested uh, in the Sifto mine in Godrich, Ontario. The Sifto mine, uh, you might know Sifto from salt. That's what they do, they mine salt. Um, the entire place, you can't see it very well in this picture, but you will in another, is, is entirely salt. You're in a cavern of salt. Uh, if you've taken a tour, you would, would have seen something like this. Um, the air even tastes salty. Now, the equipment can't come back to surface ever. It'll just rust within days and be a pile of rubble. Um, so we went down, we installed into about six or seven trucks, which would run down there. They're still running to this day. And this, you can see the cavern of salt and their different levels. And from there, we moved uh, basically across country. We partnered with all the major tire dealers from Royal Tire from Goodyear to Fountain Tire out west and uh, were able to hit many of the mines, but found that the market was kind of limited. We only have so many mines. They only have so many trucks. It's not that huge as we originally thought. So we moved to fire departments. Found fire departments, big trucks still, fantastic new so all the fire departments pretty much across Ontario are running controlled TPMS units of some kind uh, to monitor their trucks. Um, and it's been a fantastic relationship. We've gone to the fire college many times to present to all of them and, and show them what we've got going. From there, we moved to the trucking industry. Thought this was a natural progression from mining to fire trucks to trucking. Uh, Kurtz Trucking was actually the shipper for our hydraulics division at that point. And uh, when we told them what we were doing, they thought this was a great opportunity for them to get on board. And uh, they actually invited us to go with them to Fergus Truck Show. And we presented a Fergus Truck Show. This was the start of where we saw the recession and for the trucking industry. They were already talking about the slowdown. And this was about 2007 summer of 2007 when they saw it. And they were already slowing down, but we pressed on towards the trucking industry. We set up booths, brought in girls, <laughs> tried everything to promote it. But the recession was stronger than us, and we never saw 